Hi, hello, uh, welcome once again. Uh, referring to a pictorial diagram about inputs and outputs of the computer, I think you'll understand this much better now. Uh, well, we're talking about different fuel injection systems. As you can see, this is an engine controller, but you can think of it as the ECM or the PCM, which is the computer module which controls air fuel, air, air fuel ratio for the engine. So, inputs and outputs. This is a pictorial that's much clearer than I can uh, ever describe. As you can see over here, you have sensors. Sensors are always inputs. Always remember that. Ignition reference pickup from the distributor. Where, where we are, which throttle position sensor as far as air as far as temperature as far as are we are we on the brake that means we're not opening up the throttle we're not uh, um we're not opening up the throttle meaning we're not accelerating or deaccelerating. we're just on the brake so computer has to know all this information for the air conditioner low pressure switch air condition uh, map sensor See, the sensors have not changed in years. This is actually uh, not recent, but as you can see, if you use a distributor, the same thing happens. Based on these inputs, again, sensors. There are much more sensors today. May I say full sensor, as you can see. Oxygen sensors, they're left out. But anyway, remember, anything that controls air fuel, air fuel ratio has something to do with the ECM. And the ESM has something to do with the outputs of the engine. RPM, tra uh, a transmission, which gear you're in. Now these are the outputs. It takes all these, and obviously there's much, much more nowadays, obviously. Uh, intake, air temperature, everything. But now it gives it the output. The output is obviously a check engine light. As you can see, the fan in electrical will be on, will be off. The, the relay for the for the compressor for the air conditioner idle speed motor that's when you're an idle it was, uh, you'll see, see soon hopefully you'll see a picture of that um, for uh, uh, EGR ex uh, exhaust exhaust gas exhaust gases and so on and so on ignition coil as we talked about alternators we talked about intake uh, in the pump and of course the fuel injector as we talked about before if you want to see you can see the other videos that i described um many uh videos how they react those things so anyway all basically just have to remember one thing inputs to the ecm outputs to all the electrical things accessories the fans the compressor for the for the air conditioner based on your request also the, the uh, if you go through the ignition coil it, there's a, uh, there's actually um you're turning on the ignition coil you're turning on the pump you're turning on the alternator all computerized as i've shown you in other videos like you, you can see on my channel joe electronic schematic photo fuel injectors obviously with a pulse so the same thing has not changed over years all the sensors all the sensors once you hit once you open once you hit the accelerate that pedal information goes in information has to go out to the proper sources so this is how obviously like i told you before alternator is always computer controlled now there's no regular now inside everything is by the computer i did some hands-on um about alternators and all that tried to get more views um, I'll try it next time when I do these hands on. I'll try to be very simple and not and give less explanations. I think um, I'm going a little too deep into it, too technical. I'll just try to get to the point when I do hands on with things like that. But based upon these things, which brings me to the next point, there are different fuel injection systems. Now, let's say you have two banks, you have six cylinders. In this case, you have eight cylinders. When do the fuel injectors open? When do they close? It depends on the system, as you can see, port injection. We take one bank, one, three, a group, this one. In this one, we do one, three, and five, the, the odd ones. The other group are the even ones, two, four, six. And guess what? We open them simultaneously, each group. As you can see, the mist of fuel comes out into the cylinder after the, the valve opens up intake valve lets air in we, we spray the fuel the mist of fuel 
then the the spark plug gives the gives the spark of course we get compression obviously we need four things the air fuel spark and compression one of those four are missing no compression so anyway now you have three uh, one shot opening you have three of another shot now there's another one where let's say if it would be a, a v8 you have this four opening up see the firing order one eight four three then the other one is six five seven two on the other one the main idea of all these things we started off with inputs going to the to the computer telling it okay the temperature of the air how much air are we on the brake all these things uh, is throttle open is throttle closed it has to adjust the air fuel ratio it has to by doing that it has to adjust the fuel injectors so during idle it adjusts the air the um the idle air control valve it used to be manual now the computer has full control of everything like I've always been saying. What's the advantage of this event? They're trying to get better fuel economy with all these different uh, fuel injection systems. So they are trying to get emissions better with all these things. That's why they try these different things. And from one fuel injection system to another, that's basically that's what it is. But the the down part of it is obviously when you do three in a row you don't have too much time to adjust if you want to adjust one cylinder more than the other one brings us to the next point again this is called sequential injection as you, as you can see e each one is in sequential order this one then this one then this one then this one the gm thing so <clears throat> in other words it's not in groups but it is one after the other according to the firing order that it goes Obviously, it's a better system because you can adjust it as you want it, independently of uh, as the other one. And the other one, if you adjust the one, you adjust it all. This one, <clears throat> you can adjust either fuel injector one for cylinder one, or fuel injector um, eight. So they, depending on which one, you can either open it or close it longer or shorter. The time that's on, you'll let more fuel in. See the mist? The time that's off, obviously, you won't allow mist. <clears throat> more air more fuel this will be on longer more fuel less air less fuel that's how fuel injection works so anyway the advantages of these things is a little better you can adjust each one each one as you need it obviously right also for the always for fuel economy and emissions that's the biggest worry but however when it comes to <clears throat> when it comes to uh, all these things, remember, sequential, then, then there's another system that comes up, like GDI uh, also comes up now. There's always new ones. But anyway, we're always trying to get better fuel economy, basically, for the driver, for the car. We used to have big, bulky cars, which I love. We went to smaller cars. The Toyota Camry is smaller, right? All the cars are smaller now. Get less weight, better fuel economy. Which to me is not really a big trick because if if you weigh less, of course you're gonna get l l less. Uh, you're gonna get better fuel. What? Try to make an eight-cylinder big car with better fuel economy. That'll really impress me. That'll be a, the challenge. But that's how you make it: less fuel. I mean, less weight. Even if you cut down the harness, if you cut down anything on it by weight, better fuel. But anyway, this is how this works. Now let's go to the other part that I wanted to show you and uh, put this on port. Uh, I'll come, now continuing the discussion about uh, different fuel injection systems, this diagram also says it all. We need fuel obviously. So as you can see over here, we need to get the starter motor. See, there's the battery, starter motor, there's a relay that we went through several times in several videos on my channel to the starter motor and then to crank the engine which has obviously a fan now the other thing is you have fuel when you have fuel you have vapor years ago obviously we didn't really put too much concern about it obviously then we said no it's bad for the environment obviously we have to take the the, the vapor store some store it somewhere which is a char charcoal canister now, based upon, obviously, computerized things and all that, when to do it is computerized 
all these things, as you can see, this is probably a picture of the of the computer or purge valves, when to open, when to close, all these things. So, first is the starter motor. Then you go through this. You go through this. The ignition switch through a fuse link, which looks like a fuse, which goes through the, igni to, the oil pressure switch that I made videos about. First, you have to make sure you have proper oil pressure. Then we have proper oil pressure. Guess what? Then you go to the fuel pump, which is located in the fuel tank, which gives, over here, fuel to the engine. This is the fuel lines, and this is uh, uh, the lines for the charcoal canister to open it up when it needs to, when it needs to, when it's vapor. So vapor comes in here, and also, over here, this is control over here. But anyway, the, make a, a long story short, anyway, this is the, the relay, but actually the ignition switch should also be here because you go through the ignition switch through the starter motor. But anyway, um, as you see over here, you go through this, it lets the fuel pump, you activate it, it lets fuel go in. The starter motor goes through this and it activates the engine. But we need oil pressure switch also. So anyway, basically all these things from, from this video is, is just a pictorial to maybe hopefully you understand a little better. Like I said, when I do hands-on, I did hands-on for um, sensors. Um, I used all these different, uh, uh, well actually one, a scope, trying to make it easy as possible with digital readouts, but obviously the views were not that good. Um, I'm trying to work on keywords and titles and things like that to try to turn it around. Um, we'll see what happens, but anyway, I, I like to make views, uh, I like to make, um, to get views uh, as, you know, people request, but obviously, if you make a video and there's no views, there, you know, and, and really not too much reason to make another one, you know, it's like you make a movie, Rocky 1, if Rocky 1 doesn't get no views, why make Rocky 2? So, like I said, I'm trying to work on the keywords, I need about, actually, 100 hours, of watch time, believe it or not, uh, out of the 4,000 hours this year, my watch time is is pretty superb. To be, uh, I don't know how, but probably because I make a lot of videos. But anyway, I need 100 hours, which is 6,000 minutes more viewed. Um, like I said, please go to my channel, Jellotronic Schematics for Auto, and you'll see it. But anyway, remember, the fuel injection systems, the fuel injectors are turned on and off. Remember that? Anyway, thanks for watching.